A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Don't want to sleep tonight at all Just want to watch them stars fall. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. Look at this amazing colour in the sky behind me. So I'm here in the heart of Glencoe and what I want to do in today's video is talk about five mistakes that I made using my wide angle lens over the last sort of 10 years that now I think about those mistakes, it's really improved my wide angle lens photography. And I'm gonna to go to different locations, it's not just gonna be one location, different locations, and I'll talk about those mistakes. First of all though, I'm gonna try and get this shot, and we won't talk about any mistakes here, I'm just gonna shoot this, it's around about 18 millimeters, just grab the shot, there's a little bit of color over the top of the mountain there, and it's quite a complicated shot. I've got, you know, this tree, a few of the trees, and I'm taking one with the water in and one without the water in. Should be pretty good. Stars fall. Would you who don't want to try to make up dreams just to be seen? I want to lay here beside you. Oh, quiet. Right, so the first mistake, and this is something that I used to do all the time, and to be honest, I still do it, and that's you get to a scene like this that's pretty epic. Um, you maybe find a stream or something, and I'm just recording this, you can see, it looks really, really good. So I, you know, I might compose a shot like that, and that is shooting at 40 millimeters, and you know, I, ch I choose either horizontal or vertical, and I take the shot. And I'm not saying that that might not work, but by doing that, you're making nothing the star of the show. You know, the mountain's a bit smaller because you're going wide angle, the river's a little bit smaller. So you can see in this that nothing's the star of the show. Now in this particular scene, it probably works okay, but it's not amazing. But if we went down, say, to where uh, the river is, there's a bit of a waterfall there, I walk with my phone and show you as I get closer. It's only a small feature, but we can make it a big part of the wide angle scene. Now, this might not be the perfect shot, but it'll just demonstrate just the difference it'll make from moving to a position like this, just to a lower position down there. Here, basically, um, what I've done is I've already set my camera up and I've got it really low. So this is probably the lowest point and Right down there, it might be a little bit too low because it gets through some of the mid-ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shot there, and I'm going to move it up to about here, and then take a shot as well. And I'll show you all three shots, and you can see by just moving like 30 meters, changing that height can make such a big difference. It's an open sky. It's not what we know. It's where we go. It's not what we see, it's what we choose to Okay, one of the things when you've got a wide angle lens in, especially when you're in an epic scene like this, is you turn up, you get your camera out, you find a position, and it looks pretty good like this. But the thing you've got to remember is that it's wide angle. It, it includes a lot of the scene. So in this particular scene here, I've got to, I've got to think that I don't want to cut off this side here um, and this area is very boring so what I've got to think is how am I going to get everything in that I want to but not have too much of this area in here and with a wide angle lens small movements make such a big difference so just by moving a couple of steps this way then I'm going to change the composition quite significantly and have less of it. Now maybe I want to move even further, so I'm going to go a little bit further this way. Maybe go to here. And now I can see that apart from this new photographer that's arrived here, I've got a nice composition. It's nicely balanced between this area and this area. And it looks 
really good. So you just gotta think about that. Don't make the mistake of including something that ends up being a really big part of your composition in a scene. Because if you do, then you probably should be zooming in a little bit or moving left or right. I'll show, I'll show an example of this again, maybe further around there or in a different location, but it's a mistake that I make so often and I get back, look at my photos and think, ah, oh, I wish I'd just moved to the left there and I could have included more of the left-hand side and less of the right. Another big mistake that I make and I see all the time as well is photographers just leaving the camera in landscape mode when they've got it in wide angle and not considering shooting in portrait. And in every scene that you go to, you should consider shooting in landscape and portrait. One of the reasons behind that is people often don't use an L bracket. So this is a simple bracket that fits on your camera like this. And it makes it super simple to turn it into a portrait orientation like this. Um, but you can see in this scene here, if I go back to that location I was at before, by turning into portrait, I get a really nice shot because then I've got a nice diagonal here that's really helping the scene out. So consider that. It, the best thing to do is to get your tripod, don't use your tripod, and just hand hold so that then you can move between different positions. You should never be getting your tripod out until you know, you're know absolutely sure you've found a composition, then get your tripod out. You know, use your phone to begin with. We'll get onto that in a minute, though, we're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail. This is pretty epic, isn't it? Some flowers, high grass, and bare feet. Oh, but you each second is a tree. Eight, I keep my balance next to Okay, so using. Um, and learning from some of the mistakes I just talked about, um, I've got a little bit lower, I've thought about my left and right, and I've thought, is it gonna work best in landscape and portrait? And actually in this scene, I feel like it might work both good in both of them. So I'm gonna take a landscape shot and a portrait shot, and you can see whether you like one or the other. But I, ideally for the waterfall, I have wellies on, I may be able to get in a bit deeper. But this is pretty good, being low is quite good. I lose the mid-ground, so I lose the, the bend going round, but again, in that I've got more drama because I'm much closer to the waterfall. And that's really important when you're shooting wide-angle shots, which I'll talk about in another mistake. I keep my balance next to you It's true Nowadays there's nothing I wouldn't do So, look at this amazing scene, mountains in the background, we've got a little bit of a river going through here, and it's really epic, and the, the instant temptation is, you put a wide-angle lens on, you want to capture the whole scene, but if I just jump into the scene now, you'll see that up above me here, up there, the sky is fairly bland above the mountains, and on this shot, which is shooting about 16 millimeters at the moment, ideally what I want to do is I want to turn the camera and point down a little bit if I'm shooting wide angle. But the mountains are very distant, I'm not that close to them, they get further away, there's nothing in the foreground that's really good. So if you're going to shoot a scene like this with a wide angle shot, and actually I think it might be better to shoot this with a sort of a 30, 40, 50 millimeter, even 70 to 200 millimeter lens, then you've got to find something that's super stunning as foreground. Like this shot that I shot in this exact location, about four years ago. You know, this is a good example of what you can get. Now we'll try and sort of recreate something like that. We'll go down there and look at those tufts of grass down there. But yeah, if you've got a shot like this, then you, you really want to be finding something epic in the foreground because the background mountains are not going to look epic by the time you've gone to 14 to 16 millimeters. Dry out in the sun for 
Lovely. Right, so I'm back down now and I'm in amongst these sort of tufts of grass which look fantastic for a wide angle lens. Um, I've got more detail there. You know, the background mountain, which is small, is just a bit player in the, in the whole scene now. So I've got this river that's a nice leading line to the mountain that's hidden by the cloud, unfortunately, at the moment. I've got this mountain over at the right hand side. But all this is really, really interesting. I've been waiting a little bit for, to try and get some sunlight on it. If I got some sunlight on it, I think it would probably help it. Um, but it just makes more of the wide angle lens. And like I said, I think this scene is also suited when I was higher up to a long lens on the mountains in the distance. You don't always have to shoot a wide angle lens when there's a big vista to get a vista shot. So I'll show you all those shots now and then we'll go and talk about another mistake that I make all the time when I'm shooting wide angle. Dark ocean down. For you I'd build the biggest kite and spend all of my time. It's not a game for me Imagine it It's my new best friend And red is all I see I got a PhD In love Well look at this amazing, amazing scene behind me in Glencoe And um a mistake that I used to make a lot, which is how close you need to be to the mountain um, to get the foreground of the mountain in. I always thought you had to be a little bit further away, but you really want to be on top of the mountain. You can see by the video shot here that, you know, this is 24 mil and I've just got the scene in and it's quite a long way away from me. Um, but if I show you on here, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get this river and then the mountain. And I'm at 14 mil. And what it means is the mountain is still going to look reasonably sizable. It's going to be a big part of the image. Um, now, I think probably what I need to do is just go a little bit lower rather than have this rock in. So I'll probably take one with the rock in and then one over the top of the waterfall as well. Um, and yeah, you just need to be so much closer to the mountain to get some foreground and mountain in and make the two sort of more balanced together. Always remember that. Every step, every breath For you, my head's up over the clouds For you, if there's a valley I'd build a bridge So that you could get by But I'd grow so we could fly Daydream Right, I think there's time to get one more shot. I'm going to go back to the location that I was on the first day, which is like this windy river. I can talk a little bit more about um, wide angle again, but the light's just so, so good. So I'm so excited to see what I can get that's different. But I am tired because walking in, in this sort of boggy marsh is just energy, energy zapping, and I've been doing it since eight o'clock. Anyway. Let's go. Oh my God, have you seen the light now? It looks absolutely epic. So there's, over here, it looks um, like there's a bit of a waterfall. We could shoot in that direction. We can also shoot in that direction. I think I'm gonna shoot in that direction first. Got my 24 to 70, I'm gonna go to the 24 me milli millimeter end of it, and <laughs> just need to shoot. <laughs> okay, I've set my tripod up. I, I'm just gonna go 24 millimeters this time, because you don't have to go super wide. It looks so epic. We've got this golden light here. And I'm going to do it in landscape and portrait because I feel like the landscape, you can see the whole mountain range and there's really nice reflected light in the water as well. This is so good. I'm just going to get on and take the shot. It's so, so good. It's not a game for me. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. I've got a print to show you, which is always the case. I just can't resist printing. I just love it so much. Um, and those wide angle mistakes that I went through are things that I still make, if I'm honest. Um, so it was a good lesson to me, really, to go out and try and improve myself in terms of those things. Um, so I'm going to go through this print and just explain a few things on this print and show you, show you what I thought was my favourite photo from, from that session. So I am packing for Antarctica uh, at the moment. I'm going in two days, um, which I'll, I'll be in there. I'll be in Antarctica, I think, when you see this video. And you'll probably see all my stories on Instagram, so make sure you check it out. Um, there's a link somewhere here to my Instagram profile. I will try and post as much as I can as long as we've got a reasonable satellite internet connection on the boat. I'm so excited, but packing um, has made me realize that my page on my website isn't up to date, my gear page. So I've been using Squarespace to update it. It's super easy to do, as you can see here. It's really easy to lay things out, make them look good. And you can see I put all my gear on, my new lenses, and the gear that I use when I'm going on a trip like this as well. Packing's been a little bit chaotic because I've got to figure out what I'm going to take. You know, I only think I need a small tripod on a boat. Um, Maybe I don't even need a tripod at all, so a lot of stuff's going to be handheld, I think. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. They've made it possible for me to update that website so easily, um, which saves me time, which means I can spend more time printing. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it probably is a good thing. <laughs> uh, it costs me more money printing, but I enjoy it. Yeah, so thanks Squarespace. If you're looking for a website or a domain, make sure you go to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel for 10% off or use offer code Nigel. Right, onto this print. So this was printed on Photospeed, NST bright white paper, and it's just, it looks really good. <laughs> I get so carried away with, with, with printing. I brought out the sky here, and I've sort of balanced the shot, which I think works well. I think that this tree on the left balances these heavy components on the right, and because it's a little bit further off to the left, it works quite well. And then I've just got a nice shutter speed here using the wide angle lens and pointing down a little bit, but not too much because I think this is a shot where the sky and the foreground are equally important in the composition. I'm obviously quite close to the mountain. So even though I'm shooting, a, I think it was about 14 millimeters this, it works well. I'm just not sure about this in the bottom right corner, but I left it in because I felt like I could have cloned it out, but then I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So yeah, it worked, it worked really well. The portrait shot worked really well. And the last thing I'd say, just to finish off in terms of the wide angle photography, is make sure that you um, just consider those mistakes. I, I think the biggest thing for me is that the first one really, which wide angle encompasses a lot. And, and in photography, what we were trying to do as photographers is narrow down what the photographer sees. And with wide angle, you can often shoot too much and it can leave less to the imagination. So what you've got to try and do is, is think of a way with that wide angle shot that you can reduce the amount of information in, in the shot by, by either just shooting more foreground or thinking more about the sky or thinking about your positioning. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye. It is so cold up here.